Hey guys, welcome to the Coach Haas Podcast, sponsored by Sports Rehab PA, Bucks County's premier sports rehab. Today I have uh, the Tri Podcast back together. This is our third attempt tonight, so don't let us fool you. We've had three full conversations already on a bunch of just shit that we'd like to talk about, but uh, we will actually get to some, some actual topics that we did want to talk about tonight, but... I want to in- introduce Mike and John here. So, Mike, go ahead, give us a uh, little shout. Well, how you guys doing? After our third attempt at trying to get Zoom to work, <laughs> compliments a lot. Gotta love that. Gotta love that internet connection. Yeah. Uh, I am John, and uh, I'm here to talk. Coach, you. So, what we talked about a little bit before was we were congratulating you on your podcast, which is the Coach You podcast, which everyone, please go out and listen to his stuff. He's got some great stuff on there. How many podcasts have you released so far? Three? No, I just one. I only released that one so far. I'm working oh, okay. on another one right now. And right. Uh, I have seven recorded. So. Okay. All right. Nice. Yeah, I think I, I'm really excited about the next one, too. So. Okay. Uh, can, we get a, can we get a little hint on who it is? Or? Uh, I'm going to – I'm going to – it, it's a it's a former NFL uh, head strength coach. Okay. He's he okay. in the league for uh, six, 17, 17 years, sixteen years. Okay. Um, and uh, he the the talk is on uh, love, and uh, it's uh, I'll read you a little bit of the note. I mean, it's essentially Chip Man. That's his name. I'm gonna tell you that. I'll leave it at Chip. Okay. So uh, he just talks about interactions and relationships and. I didn't expect to take so long with this podcast, but it was over an hour and 15 minutes for the conversation. And uh, wow. I tried cutting it down. I just couldn't because every story he tells is amazing. And uh, he, sees, he sees the most, um, he sees depth and simplicity in interactions with humans. And uh, so I think, and especially right now with what's going on in the world, um, just being able to. Oh, to that'll be that. cool to get out there for everyone yeah. to listen to. That's why, that's why I chose to do it number two, because uh, he just, I really, I wanted to do it number one at the beginning. And then I was like, but I just also really loved Donnie's talk and, um, you know, but, and I also knew this one was going to take a little longer to edit just because how long it was, but now I'm really excited because of that. He talks just about human connections and, you know, how, how, it, how every interaction he's had in these stories in his life have, you know, led to where he's at now. And it's cool, man. It's, he, you know he's very, I, listen, very I bartended for 20 years on top of doing all the training and stuff like that. There was nothing more enjoyable about the job than just the meeting people and the yeah. conversations and things. I actually took a job at the airport. No lie. Same company. It was a chicken Pete's. I went down. Oh, that was fries. Yes. There you go. I worked down at the airport and specifically wanted to work in international, um, the uh, international terminal because I was so curious where people were going. What are they doing? What do you do for a living? You know, like three questions and the next thing you know, they're on the plane. You're like, okay, you know, yeah. but it's just fascinating to just hear people. And that's kind of why I, I, I really started this. It was about kind of the same way you said, you know, yeah. it's the curiosity that you have and what other people are thinking, how they go about you know, their habits in each day and, you know, what, what brings them, you know, passion and, you know, and, and to obviously the three of us, this is, this is our passion, you know, it, it, it's helping other people at the yep. same time. It's, you know, it's uh, experimenting with our bodies and finding new things. Uh, in our other talk that we didn't really get a chance to record earlier tonight, John was talking about the inertia ropes. Is that what they're called? Oh, uh, the inertia waves. Yeah. The, so they're like, they're battle ropes, but they're not. They're uh, the idea is that the inertia is created, and you're trying to stay stable through movement. So, like you know, a lot of, like the body blade was like a, a similar kind of idea. Um, Mike, what are what what are some other ones that you know of that are like that? Um, just kind of looking that up now. The inertia wave probably can't even buy those anywhere. I'm just search Amazon. No, you could you could totally get them, man. Straight yeah. from the inertia wave. Yeah, if you go to the, wave, the Gronk, the Gronk Fitness inertia wave. <laughs> I don't, so he's actually friends with Gronk. Like I'm pretty sure Gronk's invested in the company. Um, but the, the trainer, man, he's he's a really nice guy. Uh, he actually, I'll, I'll shout out to him just for being a stand up dude. Um, I I asked him point blank, like, hey, would you be able to send me a set? Because they're you know they're not cheap. And I'll do a set amount of videos or whatever. 
Um, and he was, he just, you know, he pull out, he flatly told me his standard or like not standards, but like how he operates that. And like how, you know, I respect that because sure. everyone has to have their rules and stuff. Um, and, but then he even off, he's like, you know what, if you do it and you do order it, I'll still give you that rebate back. And I was like, you know what, don't even like, I, right. I want to respect that. And, um, and so I, and I've, I've saved up for him and bought them and I'm so glad I did because they're such a great training tool. That's awesome. That was wow. in one, of his, uh, one of your latest videos. So uh, make sure you check them out. Yeah. there. Too. We'll get into all that at the end and where you can find everybody and stuff like that. But I, I know we talked about um, earlier, we had a podcast, Mike and I, we, we got Kevin Miller on from uh, Villanova. He's the sports performance coach for most of the sports there, but mainly the women's men and men's and soccer, men's and women's soccer teams. And, um, we just got going on a couple different questions. One of them was, you know, I had concerns as far as, you know, these kids coming back and how deconditioned they still might be. Because again, not every kid is going to have the opportunity to get into the gym and do these things. And there's a lot of things you can do outside and that's great. And we know that, but there's still that piece of getting into the gym and really getting in your true strength training and all that. So, you know, he did raise some questions about, you know, the concerns of these kids coming back and, and not fully being in shape and then having soft tissue injuries where, you know, we, we kind of threw some questions to Mike. Um, but the, the one thing that I did want to bring up again, because I thought that it was pretty interesting, I thought we were going somewhere with it, was my point of wearing the mask while you're training, right? And it taking in too much carbon dioxide and then somebody in a gym, God forbid, going down, you know, and the next thing you know, they go, oh, by the way, you really shouldn't be wearing them when you're exercising that heavy. Like walking is one thing, but now when all of a sudden you get your heart rate up, you really shouldn't be wearing that. You know, and he was like, wow, you know what? I really didn't even think about that. You know, and then Mike kind of took it another way and thought maybe this is a new standard of training we can go with, you know, like, you know, we don't need altitude training anymore. Now we have just uh, coronavirus mask training. You know? Nasal so. breathing only. <laughs> well, just put duct tape over everybody's mouth. Let's just, that's a mandatory. Just no, what? That's not a bad mouth. idea for most people. But. That isn't a bad idea for a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, look, it, it, would, uh, it would solve the lack of masks problem, all right? Just get a piece of duct tape. Yeah. It would also cause a lot of peace in the world. <laughs> yeah. People might have to use this. Exactly this, this, right. Yeah. right. Wow, going back, you know, back to the old days, right? Yeah, just a head nod. Let's let's uh, let's let's see if we can communicate that way. One of the things that I'm I'm I swear that I'm really really struggling with is I am a handshaker. I'm a hugger. Yeah. Like I don't like close talkers, but I'm a hugger. Like and I, every day I'm like I just yep. I don't know how bad you guys are, you know, but that's just. That's always been in me, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a high fiver and hugger for sure. You know, like, uh, depends on the situation for handshakes and high fives. They're like, you know, the, the bro hug, uh, you know, pull it in, you know. Uh, <laughs> and right now, it's been getting a lot of the elbows. Yes, the elbows. that's the new one. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. You, go. So, you know, I'm cool. And look, I, it's interaction to me. Like, it, when, it, when, it, when you look at that, like, what does that represent? that's just one person seeing another person and like really happy to see them. So like, if you can do it in a way that still makes you feel that way, that's the way to go. Like make, you know make up a, smiles out of it. Are you laughing? Yeah. yeah. Like I, I've been doing, I've been doing air high fives, you know, like making up fake handshakes, but air high fives. Right. It's like, yeah. Like we did uh like fake bro hugs, like from a distance, you know, right. Right. So it's just like, make fun, have fun. Like I, 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 this whole quarantine and like this whole time has just taught me to do that. Like just be creative and, you know, what, how, what's the best that we can make of all this situation? That's it. Right. And you know what? Honestly, a lot of the things that I did want to talk about tonight was, and we've been talking about this topic for a while, and I really wanted to get this on because with you and the mental health advocate and all the things that Mike and I have talked about, um, the psychology of an athlete after an injury, right? Yeah. Now, John, you, you handle, you know, more general pop where they're not necessarily injured, but they're looking to get healthy. But I'm sure that there's – everyone that comes in has either had a bad back at some point or their knee hurts or something like that. So you've had to do some sort of rehab, you yeah. know, or prehab or however you want to post rehab. However, so 
Um, but now we're getting into really like the mental side of it. And I read this really cool article and we'll, I'm, I'm going to get into some of the, the different, you know, uh, pieces of the, the psychology that this, this article had written, but, um, tell me some of the things that maybe you kind of experienced with, you know, like the, the psychological end of an, either an injury or, you know, something that's just kind of lingering on one of your, your clients or whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I think like you're right. And much like you, Joe, actually. So like you take athletes from PT, you know, and, and, and you get them back after to get to play. I actually, I have a, I have a couple of PT patients come to me that's gen pop, like trying to get back to life kind of thing. I like after ACL surgeries and stuff like that. So um, I've dealt with definitely a lot of the, I wouldn't even say the physical side. Cause you know, for gen pop, it's a different, it's a different mentality, right? For athletes, it's, you want to get on that field and play. Like that's the goal. Right. And you want to be at the best possible percentage you can to be performing, you know, at a high level um, with the my gen pop. And I think it correlates. I do think it correlates 100 percent between the two. But with my gen pop, typically it's like body dysmorphia or it's, um, um, you know, not thinking they're doing enough because of the way that the industry sells fitness and training and what it's supposed to look like and what we're already supposed to know and supposed to have down like squats and push ups and pull ups and all these things. It's like, but we're not taught these things. So I think it can be really overwhelming for people coming back from, you know, injury and stuff because you train to get to this high level and then coming back down, trying to, it's, how do you, how do you rebound from that? Um, so I think one, look at the reality of it. Like we're in a time right now and just accept, accept this, that we're in a historic time right now. Yep. And you have to understand that nothing is normal. And that includes, uh, you know, how we're going to get back, what sports are going to look like for a while, you know, um, life period is going to look different. This is a, this is a life changing event that can really be messing with a lot of people right now. And especially if you're an athlete who can't access the training, the coaching, um, you know, equipment, the best thing you can do is look at your reality, understand that this is the situation. It does suck. It does. Nobody, nobody wants this. Right. Then how can I, use this time? How can I use what I have here? How can I use my skill set? How can I use my brain to think about what I can get done? Who can I reach out to, to see if I can get some exercises or just the simplest things? What can I do? Can I follow something on YouTube? You know, can I get a recommendation? So like, I think really laying it out and understanding that we're all in that same feeling of like, this really sucks. Um, and then going to that place of what can I do to make it better? Um, which I think is essentially what life is. It's adjusting, you know? And so for That's young athletes, dumb. it's hard because they haven't been through that. And I was there too. We've all, you know, we were all younger at one point. We could look, we can easily say in hindsight, right. You know, but when you're in it, it feels like it's the end of the world. So for any kids that are in it, like right now, you know, take a deep breath, take a step back. Time's going to, it's going to, it's, everything's going to get back at some point, but yep. do what you can with what you got. Exactly. Because no one's expecting. Control what you can control. Yeah. And go from there. Mike, you have, uh, you have a decent amount of, uh, younger population clients now, athletes. Um, you know, some of them have worked with me and I've sent to you. And then there's a few right now that I'm, I'm waiting for you to discharge and come to me. But I mean, you're probably having these conversations with them now. I mean, it's, it's obvious, right? We're all having these conversations with our clients and, and, you know, like how they handle certain things, but, I mean, when you see these kids come in sometimes, like, what are you doing to kind of, you know, um, help them through this psychological part of the injury? Um, well, I mean, with the whole COVID thing, I think that a lot of the kids are just happy to get out of the house. Um, so, you know, PT is another thing for them to do. Um, I haven't seen any parents, at least in any of these kids, that are really, like, concerned. Um, you know, they're willing to bring them in. We had one parent, but the, the girl was younger. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, they come in, so, and we're just kind of treating it as if uh, we know that they're going to get back at some point. And then using this downtime of not having pressure on their shoulders of a, a return date and tournaments and all that stuff coming up, a little bit more relaxed time to just work on these things. Um, but all that set aside, I think that, when the athlete comes in and they have an injury, you know, um, a lot of these kids are obviously quiet, you know, um, out of the ones so far that I've seen since you started sending them, Joe, I think, uh, 
they're a little bit um I wouldn't say if it's almost kind of like just they're in like still a state of shock as to what's going on, but they're almost kind of a little bit of an open sponge to say, okay, like, what are you going to offer me? What do I have to do? So I noticed that when they are coming in, they are motivated, you know, something's motivating them to get there. And especially when you could show them where their issues are and explain to them, because some of them were going to PT beforehand and explaining to them, you know, to say, well, I'm in PT here again, so why is this any different? So we had that conversation about, you know, that in every profession you have, there's good and there's bad. And at this point, you know, in my career, I'm not scared to state that, you know. I mean, you, you, you don't bash other companies and other professionals, but, you know, you have to call it like it is sometimes, you know. It, just like the conversation we had about the PT working with the individual with the ankle, Joe, you know, it's just like, at this point, now you're going to sit here and say, well, there's still an ankle issue. I mean, what are you doing here, you know? So, and, and it gets on my, and I have to be an advocate for that because if we want to be, you know, uh, referred to as the doctors that we are and people to recognize that, we have to start acting like it, you know? And a lot of this stuff is unacceptable. So, you know, when these kids come in and they had a failed course of PT or they weren't making the progress, I think it, and it could be even that too, even like in John's case of a trainer. Well, I, I went to this trainer and uh, how many times is, you know, maybe an individual working, you know, in a gym where they're comfortable or with a trainer that's maybe not speaking up about how they're doing because maybe they don't want to hurt their feelings or they don't want to, maybe they don't have the knowledge base and then they come to you and it's like, well, yeah, you've been deadlifting wrong the whole time. They don't want to hear that because they're up to this X amount of weight. And now you're going to tell them they have to drop it down. It's a big yep. ego yep. type thing there too. It kind of maybe hurts the confidence. So it comes along the same thing now is as going from one, one course of therapy or training now coming into the next course, how do they transition to that? So I think having tools, like these assessment tools from FMS to show the kid and to show the parent, look, here's where it is. You, you can't hide it. You either can do this or you can't. This right. is what we need to improve. If we improve this, you're going to get better at these things. It gives them a little bit of motivation and know, okay, I'm here. I have some answers. I'm going to work on this. And they kind of open up a little bit from that, especially when they see, wow, I'm doing this or I'm doing this exercise. Man, this is really hard for me. Or wow, I'm sore. Now it starts to click. Like now we're starting to do some things. I think that helps a little bit. Copy more too, you know, and that's, you know, it, it's that, that spatial awareness and understanding, you know, your body and, and, and how it's moving. And, you know, um, listen, I, I go back to the, I'm still blown away with some of these kids that I see. Can't backpedal, can't side shuffle, can't jump rope. I mean, like you're talking three very, very basic things that they can't do anymore, you know? Um, but I don't want to get too far off topic. I do want to read this though. This is, um, this came from, uh, let me make sure I get it right. The uh, Journal of Health and Psychology. And they talked about the psychological rehab after sports injury. And they went into a, a bunch of different uh, pieces to that. I'm just going to label a couple of them. And I want you guys to kind of, you know, tell me what you think about them. One of them is talking about keeping perspective. John kind of touched on that a little bit. You know, like control what you can control. You know, just be. Uh, another one was uh, sticking to your rehab program and making sure that you're constantly staying with it, you know, and, and not falling off, especially in times like this, you know. But but that can be discouraging, you know, when, 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 you, when you get hurt and you do make a little bit of progress and then all of a sudden there's, there's a speed bump you know, and there's a minor setback and, you know, sometimes it's tough to get them back, you know, back up and moving again. So um, another one was becoming a better athlete, Re redirect your energies, stay involved in your sport, watch video and sports on TV, which is kind of difficult to do right now because yeah. unless you're watching cornhole tournaments or something like that, um, you know, I watch so much of that. Yeah, exactly. Like three one of the ones I really that. wanted to touch on, and then this is why I brought this one up, uh, develop a mental imagery program. This sounds mm -hmm. right up John's alley, okay? I wonder what, what, what – what, is there any more info on it? Yeah, it says um, 
There's nothing more important to your mental recovery than mental imagery. Imagery is not just something that goes on in your head. In fact, it connects your mind and your body and amazingly activates muscles in the same way as you would actually performing in your sport. Mental imagery, in a way, fools your body into thinking that you are really performing in the sport. Man, I, th I think it's so easy to say, have a mental imagery. Um, I think it's really hard to understand what your mental imagery is until you get to know yourself. So uh, does that make sense? Because I think yeah. like- Oh yeah. Well, I to me, that's that, why you need to- like, And it's funny, because I talked to another PT student uh, a few weeks ago about that. And, and he said, the, uh, I forget the, the actual coach that worked with one of the golfers, but it, creating that mental image, you know, before you hit the ball and you're looking down sure. the fairway and things like for that. Sure. So, I mean, listen, the same thing, like when you're, when you're, you know, in rehab, imagine the way it was before you got hurt and, and, you know, and start trying to, to build that snowball. So it starts going in your direction, you know, and, and, and start creating those visions. It's like having a vision board, right. Putting it in your head and going, okay, like yeah. these, this is where I need to get to. And, and start creating that image in your head. Well, I think that's important too, having like that, where you said, have that, like the image board, right? It puts it, it lays it out for you, right? But that's only one piece of the puzzle. Like if you just lay something out, it's great, but now what? Right. And so right. having that mental imagery, so like you're saying, it's like, okay, so if we're talking rehab, what's that mental imagery? Okay, like I, I want to have this exercise done because right now that's what I'm working on is trying to get better. Right. So then I would say, all right, so Mike or Joe, you prescribe an exercise to your, your people and they can't do it. So we talk about mental imagery. It's like, all right, let's master this move. Let's get better at this move right now. Don't worry about anything else. Right. This right. move is part of the process. And without the process, you can't have the mental imagery that you think. It's a tool to build on, you know, it's your building. Yeah. Board, so you got to have, yeah. You, know. you have to have that. So, um, I like the mental imagery, absolutely, but it's it's the same thing. Like we all can, we all have thoughts, we all have dreams, we all have good ideas. It's about action at that point. Yeah, you know, and you have to lay out what it looks like. And this is the same thing with training, same thing with food, same thing with PT. If you if you lay it out and you're inconsistent with 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 it, you're going to get inconsistent results. You're going to you're not going to get what you wanted or what you think is is what what you had in your head. Oh, the imagery. Right, your angle. Yeah. So you got to put into action and have a plan and, and execute as best you can. Cause it's never going to look good. It'll look perfect. You know, like you just, you're shooting for, you're shooting for, 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 for perfect, but it's, shooting, yeah, but life is not perfect. So <laughs> it rarely happens that way. Right. Mike, so. any, uh, any uh, pieces to that? Your mental imagery? Yeah. I mean, they used to have us try to do that in high school, trying to imagine yourself being successful you know, and we always obviously thought it was corny because at that age, it's kind of hard to get that in your head. You know, you're like, let's just right. go off and go. But I think now as we start to understand human performance a little bit more, um, you know, the mental aspect is extremely important. If you continue to see yourself failing, I mean, any athlete can work themselves up before a competition. You start thinking about all the negative stuff and, and fear is mostly based on sometimes things that we create in our own minds, you know, uh -huh. I mean. <clears throat> you know, fear is, is, you know, what is it? Um, it's an acronym for that. It's like fear everything and run or face everything and rise, whatever, you know, something like that. Pitbull um, right now. Huh? You sound like Pitbull. That's on his state. He says that, that phrase, that phrase all the time now. He's, okay. he's Mr. Worldwide. That's what he is. Right. Right? Mr. 305. <laughs> yeah. 305. Right. Nothing about fear. It's 305. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's sometimes we, we create, these these images or these things in our head um and we work ourselves up before we even get there so you fail before you even get to the starting line so i think it's sometimes um you know blocking that stuff out you know isn't always so easy but that's why we do things that expose so you do simulations we do practices so um you know, like uh, even for uh, like for Spartan training, you'll do a workout that is going to simulate the shit that you're going to go through. So when race comes, you're not getting kicked in the nuts. You're like, I've been here before. Right, yeah. right. You right. learn how to go through that that mental focus. And this is what I was talking about even with the conditioning for the kids for soccer and stuff like that. It's let's put them through what they're going to feel in a game. 
let's get them, get their brain, get them all, you know, flustered, you know? So, I mean, it's just like, kind of like what you went through before with the Wi-Fi, man. It's like, <laughs> we got you flustered. So if it happens a couple more times, the fifth time you're going to be like. I had a major meltdown earlier. My face was really red. I was out of sun today, so. But, I mean, you know, it was really red. John was laughing, and then I had to channel my, my inner mental health and, and calm myself down. I'm back in front of this, the spot that I wanted to be, and my camera looks good. My makeup, they did a good job. So I, I'm much better now. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, you, just, you just have to kind of control what you can control. Have that, you know, when, when you're – you're having those those images, right? It's I just lost my train of thought there. John, help me out. Well, I actually had a thought on. Oh, like, good. I had a thought on um, Im like images. Period. And what you, uh, we were talking about too, Mike, about like the kids being young. It's they don't know necessarily like what to imagine all the time. You know, we've been through experience and stuff, and yeah. So it's easy for us to say that, right? So it's like, how do you relay that to a younger person? Um, and I mean, the, 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 the biggest thing I could say is like, slow down, like slow down, expect things to take longer and then work as best you can to make it not take longer, you know, and, and the work is got, the work is going to be whatever the task is in front of you. So if it's get back and to rehab, better do all your exercises and do them as well as you can every single day and yeah. make it simple and I master the basics. I, that like I, right now, especially like keep it simple to, for movements, whatever your movements are, especially in the kids, for the kids who are not injured right now, like we were talking about, just get really good at understanding your body moving. Where are you weak? And then focus on the weak spots. You know, because like, I was thinking about like imagery and stuff. It's like, so if you, have an, if you have a thought, which we don't control, thoughts come and go all the time, right? right? We don't control those things. And if we let those dictate who we think we are, right? Because we, we, Mike, exactly what you were saying. It's like we paint this picture, and it could be from, it could be from past experiences, traumas. We don't know. We didn't realize we're you're when you're in the middle of something too, you know, like childhood. Like really you don't sick. realize things. You don't realize it because you're doing what you need to in the world to survive in the given environment you're in, right? It's not good or bad. It's just what it is. Everyone's got a different path. So, but thinking about like, um, uh. Now I lost my train of thought, going back to what I just said there. Um, I think it's more the exposure to a stimulus. The more you're exposed to that stimulus, yeah. the, the more confident. It's just like if you look at some move or something that sure. you've never done before, you're going to fear it because you're not confident. It's new to you. But if you're like, I've done that before, it's a piece of cake. Well, why yeah. is it a piece of cake? Because you've done it before. You've done it before. You've done it before. in your head Sometimes, or on the field or however. Yeah. Sometimes we get in our head when we see something new because you're just like, but like you said, you got to slow down and think about it, you know, and realize what it is that we're asking, we're asking to be done, you know. And, and if you're not good at it, use that as motivation to get great at it. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, Michael Jordan is a perfect example. We just finished watching The Last Dance. I don't know if yeah, you guys heard know. about this. Regardless of who Michael Jordan was in terms of like, you know, what he did and how he talked to people and that kind of stuff the guy used his weak spots as his motivation. And, you know, that's, that's the big, like you're saying, like, if you're not good at something, don't take it personally. Don't, don't act like it's the end of the world. Like yeah, yeah. use that. See, like, don't back down from that. Use that. If you want to go get better at that, you can do it. It's just going to take trial yeah. and error. Well, you know? here's the one thing I definitely want to touch on um, is we were talking about basically almost a psychology of, these teenage athletes now, these kids, or even before that, you know, uh, this whole thing, we know the pressure with the organized sports. We know how crazy it is. We know the parents and looking at the different aspects, you know, is this, is this, I mean, think about it even from a perspective, you know, of, you know, if we, you know, as parents, you know, Joe has two sons, you know, I'm expecting my first, you know, in, in a couple months, you know, so it's like right. looking at that perspective. Thanks, man. You, um, so you, as a parent, you want your kids to obviously be involved in something so they're not out being reckless, doing whatever. So that's a perspective there. So maybe sometimes as parents push their kids to be involved all year round so they don't have time to fuck around somewhere else. But then from the kid's perspective, it's like some of these kids that 
you know, we work with, they're like drones because the parent is basically pulling the strings and the kid is just head down, go forward there. You know, what's going on there in the mind of that athlete and how does that play into rehabbing from something, you know? You know, it's funny. It, it, it does talk that went on to talk about healthy strategies, right? And one of them was, and this goes back to one of the points that you talked about, John, it said, be sad, right? Accept it, feel it, right? And then, then move on, right? Deal with what it is. Number three, set new, more, re more realistic goals for yourself. And then just readjust and reset. Maintain a positive attitude no matter what. That one is, it's easier said than done, right? We can always say, hey, just be positive and smile. And, you know, listen, it, I, I've dealt with bouts of depression. I'm sure everyone has dealt with things like that before. It's a lot easier said than done. It's practice just like it would be if you had to go into the gym and you got to get better at something. You got to practice it. It's not just, again, there's action behind it. It's great to just say, I want to be positive, but you have to put action behind it no matter you know, even if it's small steps, but you got to, you got to start putting those pieces in there. I agree. With that. Um, sure. Take an active part in your healing. Continue to practice and work out. So what does that mean though? This, the last one. Continue to practice and work out. No, the one before that. Uh, to take action and part in your healing. Uh, be conscientious about your physical therapy. Follow your doctor's advice. Don't cut corners. Work hard with your rehab. If you're recovering from a, a broken bone, it said spend five to ten minutes imaging the bone in the shoulder, like healing. Guys, see, I, I just I had this as soon as you said don't cut corners. I go, why why is it said like that, and why not say if you find yourself feeling like sh shortchanging yourself, or if you feel yourself like not give you know what i mean like in a different way because it's right. like they, they don't do this, they make otherwise you're bad it's like no if you find yourself in this realistic situation of you coming back from an injury and you're sad because you're in the middle of it and you're not feeling what you thought you would be feeling you know better i'm i'm, I'm stronger now i'm faster now i can play and you know no now it's like three weeks later three now now you're pushed back three weeks let's say that you run into that if you find yourself feeling a certain way, not don't cut corners. Cause that to me is like saying, if you cut corners, you're, you're wrong. If you cut corners, you're bad. You know, people cut corners in this life and still are successful and fine. Yeah. It's, it's not about that. It's about understanding how you are in situations and understanding like, man, I'm really, I'm upset right now. Like this sucks. And it's like, talk about that. Ask, ask, you know, a PT, ask your, like, Hey, what, what do you do in these situations? You know, but like, I wish it wasn't said like that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you, you know, you have all these phrases like, uh, you know, uh, about not quitting and stuff. And what's the true definition of quitting is quitting, right. absolutely walking away from something. Or if you're in the middle of a run, you stop because you're hurting and you take, you know, 30 seconds to recover, get back to it. That's not quitting. That's almost pacing. But sometimes people feel like if they stop, they stop. That's all about quitting and just know that, okay. I got through this amount and that was my mental block there that I know that at X marker had to take a break goals to get past that next time. Even if it's for 30 seconds more, still an accomplishment. And, you know, and even like yeah, same thing I say with my patients too, or even some of the athletes that come in, you know, even if you did, you know, a couple more reps last I checked one is greater than zero. So, you know, it's one more rep. And one more rep, one more second, one more thing can usually be the difference between even a world record at some levels, you know? So one more than what you did is always an accomplishment, but everybody I think has this pressure to be this grandiose improvement, you know, where you got to do the little steps, you know, and the little steps are where you get to, you know? Yeah. Number 10 on there was uh, be patient. Hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like this is a little, and I tell, I tell, I tell my clients two things. What you're going to need through this whole process is patience and consistency. You got to be patient, right? And that and that could be so many. Like, what does that mean? Like, yeah. be patient. Like, that's in a society where patience doesn't exist. I mean, right. even right. shut down for a couple of months, and everyone's ready to go out and freaking, you know, go crazy. I mean, yeah. it's just we're we're very in a go 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 society. So yeah. you know, these blanket arrives sooner. It was the <laughs> The bottom piece in bold. 
Yeah, I, I just, you know, I mean, it's good advice, but I feel like some of it's a little bit of this, like, hippie, like, you know, whoa, let's order a pizza and chill out, bro. Like, all right, come on. We got to be a little more realistic here because these kids, if I tell any of these kids be patient and stuff, you know, they're just going to be like, screw you, dude. We got to be realistic. I think so that, they gotta, tell me they're saying behind my back then to tell me to go screw myself. Pretty <laughs> patient. Like, we also, too, they have to think about definitions of words. You know, like patience to me is going to be something different to you than it is yeah. to Mike. You know, yeah. it's like, so what we have to define terms. And so that way we're all on the same page. Because yeah. I think like kids get the messages. It's like all these slogans and sayings. It's like, but what does it mean to you? And how does it, what, how does it intertwine us? And how can I make that my own? You know, and yeah. so it's like, like thinking about being patient. It's like, well, what am I being patient for? First of all. Yeah. You know, what is patience going to look like? What does patience entail? Right. Exactly. There you go. Right. I don't think, tell me the word. Give me, some, give me some background to what you're trying to say with that. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we got to put some like kind of, you know, uh, uh, meat behind this thing. You know, it's just like these, the IG influencer quoting the president with a, with a picture. And it's like, you know, <laughs> this is like, what these kids are seeing. And it's like, all yeah. right, that's great. Slammed up a quote. You got a picture of you with your shirt off. And it's just like, you know, so we got to look a little deeper into this. Like, what do these things mean? Like the action yeah. behind the words and like, let's actually like give some examples, you know? Hey yeah. guys, we are on the hot seat because Coach Haas still hasn't paid for the upgrade. So I'm on Mike's It's shaking. a write-off, man. Mike's on his <laughs> shaking his head. Well, I tried three times to upgrade while I was on here, and it, it didn't work. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to erase what we had going. We got a really good conversation. This is going to be fixed by next time. Let the list. Zoom has it out for you, man. I Zoom swear to you, it will be fixed by next time. But I need real quick to John tell me where they can find you. Uh, Instagram's the easiest thing at Coach U Strong. That's Coach. You with the letter U strong. Um, that's the easiest place to find me. And you can DM me. I have my, I have my email up there and you can catch my podcast. I have the link on there as well. Uh, and I get 10% off Acu Mobility. So use oh, there you go. perfect. I, I use their stuff too. Mike, where can that's they great. find you? Instagram at Icor St. George. Nice. Yo, I swear. Listen, this is working out really well. I know John, you're really busy with your podcast. But if we can get you on like once a week or every 10 days, this is good shit. I love to. No, I love this stuff, man. I love it. I, get that I say, upgrade, Joe. I'm getting the upgrade. I swear to you. Yo, John, thank you very much for being on again. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I will see you or talk to you tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. Love you guys. Have a beautiful man. night, you guys. Bye, uh, you too.